Good afternoon, I'm Vashon Brown with the Midday News. Special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Contractor General Dirk Harrison says recent reports of the sale of the Jamaican telecommunications company Carousel to a South African firm has left him concerned about the manner in which it was done. He says there are questions whether there were breaches of the Telecommunications Act. Mr. Harrison has also taken issue with not being informed by Technology Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley about the sale of Carousel to Involution Limited, which was negotiated in October last year. He says with his office being the contract's oversight body, he should not have learnt about the matter or the development through the media. Declaring that there is no level playing field in Jamaica for local contractors, the contractor general posited several questions to the government and the telecommunication Has this company, South African company that we hear of, complied with all his obligations of its license and the requirements imposed by cabinet in 2016? Have they supplied all the relevant documents to the regulators? What actions, if any, will be taken should there be a breach or a failure on the part to comply with the licensee? What information is required by the minister to satisfy himself? Ladies and gentlemen, even more importantly, has any favorable treatment been granted to this licensee, whether expressed or implied? In a special report in July 2016, Mr. Harrison recommended to the government that the operations license granted to Carousel, which trades as Symbiota Investments, be revoked based on, among other things, irregularities detected in the application process. The U.S. government also took interest in the matter, revoking the visas of some Symbiota officials. The government initially refused to revoke the license, but later backtracked and attempted to yank the license. The matter ended up in court. Several residents of Toys Meadows in St. Catherine are now homeless after fire damaged their homes on Thursday. There were no injuries, however, the situation has brought light to an issue that's been a concern for quite some time in the area. TVJ's Anthony Log reports. This bucket filled with water is just one way residents of Tors Meadows in Spanish Town assisted in putting out the blaze which damaged five houses in the community Thursday morning. It's reported that shortly after 10, residents saw smoke coming from a section of the building and contacted the Spanish Town Fire Department. But upon arrival... The responded unit, realizing that additional resources would be needed, radio back to base, and we called Portmore and Old Harbor Fire Station for additional resources in terms of water and manpower. The owner of this dwelling, Felicia Sharp, consoled after rushing home to see her home gutted in fire. Luckily, her six-year-old son managed to escape without injury. Unlike Felicia, who saved nothing, the occupants of the other houses that also went up in flames managed to save several items. Within minutes, the fire was under control. While residents commended the work of the firemen, they say it took a collective effort. If it wasn't for the community effort, we would have lost all of the horses on this block. We would have lost all of the horses on this block. But thanks to the community and the effort that they made this morning. What kind of effort the community made this morning? They make an effort by coming, pulling out the things, taking the little boy from out the house, throwing water, kicking out the door. Them do a lot of things. But while the firemen manage to carry out their duties with the limited resources, our news team understands that one of the trucks left the community to get water despite there being four fire hydrants in the area. But why? There are challenges with fire hydrants within the Spanish town area in general. So we are already aware of the working hydrants, so we did not stop to check those that are not working. In the meantime, Councillor for the Spanish Town Division, Kenesha Allen, says she'll be working to provide assistance. We will be providing her with clothing items and every single thing that we possibly can to make sure that she get her life back in order in the quickest possible time. Estimation of the damage is still unknown. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. The fleet of the Jamaica Fire Brigade is expected to be increased in the new fiscal year following an allocation of $232 million in the new budget. 
The money will go towards completing the purchase of two water pumpers. The funds will also be used to purchase ambulances, water tankers and emergency command vehicles. The St. Catherine Police and the Parish's Municipal Corporation are fuming after a meeting which was to be held on Wednesday evening to address the crime situation in Linstead did not go according to plan. It's understood that the meeting was to include both organizations as well as the business community in the town. However, no business operator turned up as TVJ's Herman Green reports. Cops and councils of St. Catherine gathered on Wednesday afternoon hoping to discuss measures that can be implemented to stem criminal activities that have been getting worse in the town of Linstead. However, these empty seats show the lack of support from the business community. Their no-show has left the cops and councillors livid. I am very disappointed because what we have done is to expend money to do town cries, to do flyers, and also we have worked within the spaces and inform these business persons as it relates to this meeting for this afternoon. So it was a highly publicized meeting in terms of treating with information to the business community of Linstead. The man who chaired the meeting, Councillor for the Treadways Division, Sidney Rose, said the gathering was extremely important as issues including recent murders, illegal vending, improper garbage disposal and parking were all on the agenda. Zone Commander 2 for St. Catherine North, DSP Andrew Edwards, says some breaches like illegal dumping are being committed by the business operators and so a hard stance will be taken on all offenders. We'll be also going zero on them. Uh, they have been spoken to on several occasions, just like the uh, business operators in the town centre. Uh, so there will be no sparing of anyone. Um, we'll be going in full force um, to let these people realise that order must prevail and disorder must be disposed of. DSP Edwards says the new approach comes as the general disorder in the town centre makes policing the area difficult. We tried to get a comment from business operators in Linstead, but no one was willing to speak with us on the matter. The councillors say they will be taking action with or without the business operators. We have taken the initiative to invite these business persons to be here this afternoon. They have frowned upon our invitation and we have no other alternative but to enforce the law as it ought to and effective tomorrow morning the 22nd of February 2018, it will be a zero tolerance approach to all these Ill illegal activities in Linstead. Herman Green, TVJ News. A major pileup of traffic along the Yalas Main Road in St. Thomas this morning following the shooting death of a security guard. Dead is 30 year old Jalit Jeffrey. She was attached to security firm Guardsman Limited. Reports are that about 5.15, Miss Jeffrey was being accompanied to a bus stop by her partner when upon reaching a section of the road in Pondside, a man opened fire, hitting her several times. She died on the spot. Her partner, who is also a security guard, returned fire. However, the gunman escaped in bushes. The St. Thomas police are investigating the matter. With over 200 murders since the start of the year, there is increased pressure being placed on the Jamaica Constabular Force, JCF, to curtail the nation's crime problem. But as they work to clamp down on criminals, there is another deepening issue which the country's citizens are calling for the police high command to fix. That is the high level of criminality within the force. Speaking on TVJ's Smile Jamaica this morning, political ombudsman Donna Parchment Brown called the situation a disgrace. Some of the worst people that we, you know, the way they behave is just completely unacceptable. They're a disgrace to themselves, their families, and to the institution called the JCF. They're a disgrace to their squaddies and to their colleagues. So there is no doubt that they have to even escalate the level of persons being put out of the force because of breaches of their disciplinary code and because of breaches of the law. There can be no let up. With the JCF can be easily identified, but additional help is needed to fix the problem. Mrs. Parchment Brown noted that playing the blame game will not address the Engaging problem. Engaging the JCF as an institution and its members in its own healing and in better service to us is, to my mind, a far more effective strategy 
than really throwing them out so as, as being less. And it's time now for a fact or fiction feature. Fact or fiction, Jamaica originally had seven parishes. Well, you can find out the answer at the end of the sports segment of the Midday News. And we go now to news overseas. United States President Donald Trump declared on Thursday that he was considering withdrawing immigration and customs enforcement agents from California. Now, this, he says, was punishment for what he called... Uh, a lousy management job in patrolling illegal immigration. But legislatures are pushing back the details from the CNN. That if we ever pulled our ice out, if we ever said, hey, let California alone, let them figure it out for themselves, in two months they'd be begging for us to come back. They would be begging. The response from California politicians like Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff, quite the opposite. Every day this man says something that is so hateful and ignorant, it never ceases to amaze me. All this stems from California having declared itself a so-called sanctuary state, one that limits police cooperation with immigration and customs enforcement. Once the president began talking today, he kept going. They are doing a lousy management job. They have the highest taxes in the nation. And they don't know what's happening out there. It's a, it's a frankly, it's a disgrace. The idea that California is doing a poor job when we are the sixth largest economy in the world, when we are the center of innovation, is ridiculous. We are standing up for our values. Mayor Schaff was not alone. From San Francisco Mayor Mark Farrell, quote, the president's declaration to abdicate the federal government's obligation is more of the same from this administration, once again choosing politics over safety. From Berkeley Mayor Jesse Aragin, we remain proud that California is a sanctuary state, a place that views immigrants as important contributors to the economy and society. Headlines, the president has them. And time now for sports. Double Olympic 100-meter champion Shelian Fraser-Price has confirmed that she will not be competing in the Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast, Australia in April. Simon Preston has our report last summer's world championships in london due to the birth of her first child says she's not in any rush to get back on the track come on it's definitely out you know steven and i have decided that you know it's so right now we don't want to rush and we don't want to put myself out there and end up getting hurt and you know delay anything so it's out it's unfortunate but it's out Fraser Price, who was delivering at a lecture at the University of Technology at the Howard Aries Lecture Series, says that despite the fact that training is going well, she's not setting any time frame on her return. I mean, so far it's 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 good. It's not bad comparing, you know, comparing where where I've been for the last couple of months and where I am now. I think I'm in a good place. You know, I'm, there's no rush. Honestly, I'm trying to take it, you know, a day at a time and try and get back to you know that strength and you know making sure that i'm injury free and you know just waiting for the time when i hit the track the two-time olympic 100 meter champion who is the first caribbean woman to win three 100 meter world titles is however not short of confidence of getting back to her best at running 10.7s in the next hopefully the next this year or next year the relationship that Stephen and I share will, because remember, now, I'll be one of the first, probably the first athlete that has, for him, he has been co coached to come back from, you know, having a baby, and persons are waiting, waiting to see what will happen. And I'm going to tell you this right here, right now. It will be one of the greatest comebacks ever. <laughs> It will be. <laughs> Fraser Price last represented Jamaica at the Rio Olympic Games in 2016, where despite nursing a toe injury, she secured a bronze medal in the 100 meters and helped her nation take silver in the 4x100 meters. Reporting for TVJ Sports, I'm Simon Preston.
And finally, this afternoon, the answer to our fact or fiction feature. We asked, Jamaica originally had seven parishes. Well, it's a fact. In, in 1664, Governor of Jamaica, Sir Thomas Modiford, divided Jamaica into seven administrative units known as parishes. These were located mainly in the mid to southeastern end of the island. But in 1683, the number of parishes increased to 15, with parishes added from the mid to northwestern end. However, in 1867, the number of parishes were reduced to 14. And that's the Midday News. I'm Vashon Brown. Join us at 7 for Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.